be doing that again. <laughs> I meant to turn on the sub chat, but I turned on the, I accidentally turned on the, the sub, the, the, the live rather than just the chat. <laughs> Epic fail. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the chat off. So this is the sub only chat and the reason I do this for story time is because I'm looking down so much I like can't moderate the comments and also I just want everyone to be able to relax so we were reading Winnie the Pooh and the chapter we were up to was the house at Pooh Corner now I might just get my little reading light somewhere around here here it is because it's a bit hard to see so let's just put that like that okay oh, hang on just to pull like that Okay, ready for our story time. The house at Pooh Corner. Here we go. Chapter one, in which a house is built at Pooh Corner for Igor. One day when Pooh Bear had nothing else to do, he thought he would do something. So he went round to Piglet's house to see what Piglet was doing. It was still snowing as he stumped over the white forest track and he expected to find Piglet warming his toes in front of his fire. But, to his surprise, um, he saw the door was open and the more he looked inside, the more Piglet wasn't there. He's out, said Pooh sadly. That's what it is, he's not in. I shall have to go on a fast thinking walk by myself. Oh bother. But first he thought that he would knock very loudly just to make quite sure. And while he waited for Piglet to not answer, he jumped up and down to keep warm. And a hum came suddenly into his head, which seemed to him a good hum. Such as he hummed hopefully to others. This is how it went. The more it snows, tiddly pom, the more it goes, tiddly pom, the more it goes, tiddly pom, on snowing. And nobody knows, tiddly pom, how cold my toes, tiddly pom, how cold my toes, tiddly pom, are growing. So what'll I do, said Pooh, is I'll do this. I turn the comments off in my stories times because I'm always afraid if I don't have moderators and, and I can't see what's happening. That's why the subject's on. Um, thank you so much for that. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so Winnie the Pooh was very cold. Um, what I'll do is I'll go home first and I'll put a muffler around my neck and then I'll go and see Eeyore and I'll sing the song to him. He hurried back into his own house, and his mind was so busy on the way with the hum as he was getting ready for the or that, when he suddenly saw Piglet sitting in his best armchair, he could only stand there rubbing his head and wondering whose house he was in. Hello, Piglet. I thought you were out. No, said Piglet. It is you who are out, Pooh. So it was, said Pooh. I knew one of us was. 
He looked up at the clock, which had stopped at five minutes to eleven some weeks ago. Nearly eleven o'clock, said Pooh happily. You're just in time for a little smackerel of something. And he put his head into his cupboard. And then we'll go out, Picklet, and sing my song to Eeyore. Which song, Pooh? The one, hang on, hang on, I think my mic has stopped, I'm just going to check my mic, sorry guys, oh no, I was just turning it the wrong way, I'm an idiot, <laughs> okay, sorry about that, anyway, The song we're going to sing to Eeyore, Pooh explained. The clock was still saying five minutes to eleven when Pooh and Piglet set out on their way half an hour later. The wind had dropped and the snow, tired of rushing around in circles trying to catch itself up, now fluttered gently down until it found a place on which to rest. And sometimes the place was Pooh's nose, and sometimes it wasn't. And in a little while, Piglet was wearing a white muffler around his neck and feeling more snowy behind the ears than he'd ever felt before. Pooh, he said at last, and a little timidly, because he didn't want Pooh to think he was giving in. I was just wondering, how would it be if we went home now and practiced your song, and then we sang it to eat or tomorrow, or, or the next day, when, when we happened to see him? That's a very good idea, Piglet, said Pooh. We'll practice it now as we go along. But it's no good going home to practice it, because it's a special outdoor song, and it has to be sung in the snow. Are you sure? said Piglet anxiously. Well, you'll see, Piglet, when you listen, because this is how it begins. The more it snows, tiddly pom. Tiddly what? said Piglet. Pom, said Pooh. I put that in to make it more hummy. The more it goes, tiddly pom, the more... Didn't you say it snows? Uh, y yes, but that was before. Oh, thank you for the heart meeting. Thank you. Uh, it was a different tiddly pom, said Pooh, feeling rather muddled now. I I'll sing it to you properly, and then you... And there's Yuki. I'm so sorry, guys. Yuki. No. <laughs> Hang on. I'll sing it to you properly and then you'll see. And so he sang the song again. The more it snows, tiddly pom, the more it goes, tiddly pom, the more it goes, tiddly pom, on snowing. And nobody knows, tiddly pom, how cold my toes, tiddly pom, how cold my toes, tiddly pom, are growing. Oh my god, Yuki. going to turn the chat back on. <laughs> Me like trying to do a relaxing story time with my very angry kitty. Yuki, can you please let me finish my story? <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> um, I had to start my life again, Lisa, because I, um, we got up to 100k screen taps, but then when I went to do story time, I went to turn off the sub chat, and then I accidentally turned on the sub live, and I made the, the live just for subs, and, and I couldn't turn it off again. <laughs> Foolish. So Pooh sang it like that, which must have been the best way of singing it, and when he had finished, he waited for Piglet to say that, out of all the outdoor hums for snowy weather that he had ever heard, this was the best. And after thinking the matter out carefully, Piglet said, Pooh, he said suddenly, it isn't the toes so much as the ears that are cold. By this time they were getting near Eeyore's gloomy place, which was where he lived, and as it was still very snowy behind Piglet's ears, he was getting rather tired of it. They turned into a little pine wood and sat down on the gate which led to Eeyore's house. They were out of the snow now, but it was still very cold, and to keep themselves warm, they sang Pooh's song through six times. 
Piglet doing the tiddly poms and Pooh doing the rest of the song, and both of them thumping on the top of the gate with pieces of sticks. <laughs> and in a little while, they felt much warmer and were able to talk again. Hi, Dick. <laughs> it's okay. You don't need to become my member. <laughs> You're already a member of the, the hard ones anyway. Um... I've been thinking, said Pooh, and what I've been thinking about is this. I've been thinking about Eeyore. Well, what about Eeyore, said Piglet? Well, poor Eeyore has nowhere to live. Nor has he, said Piglet. You have a house, Piglet, and I have a house, and they're very good houses. And Christopher Robin has a house, and Owl has a house, and Kanga and Rabbit have houses, and even Rabbit's friends and relations have houses. But poor Eeyore has nothing. So what I've been thinking is this. Let's build Eeyore a house. That, said Piglet, is a grand idea. Where should we build it? We will build it here, said Pooh, just by this wood out of the wind, because this is where I thought of it. And we will call this Pooh Corner. And we will build it for an Eeyore house with sticks at Pooh Corner. There were a heap of sticks on the other side of the wood, said Piglet. I saw them, lots and lots, all piled up. Thank you, Piglet, said Pooh. What you have just said will be a great help to us. Because of it, I could call this place Poonap Piglet Corner if you wanted to, instead of Poo Corner. <laughs> so they got down off the gate and went around the other side of the wood to fetch the sticks. Christopher Robin had spent the morning indoors, going to Africa and back, and he was just got off the boat and was wondering what it was like outside, when who should come knocking on the door but Eeyore? Hello, Eeyore, said Christopher Robin as he opened the door and came out. How are you? Meow. Yuki. It's snowing still, said Eeyore gloomily. And so it is. And it's freezing. So it is. Oh my god, guys, I'm so sorry. Yuki's not going to give up. <laughs> it seems that Yuki, like... He manages until like the three hour mark and then he's like, okay, you're done mum, you're done. He's like, no more. <laughs> he's just sitting there glaring at me. Oh, kitten. Where do I get the book light so handy? <laughs> yes, naughty kitten. Um, I got this book light on Amazon. I just like searched book light. Um, here we go. What is the matter, Eeyore? Nothing, Christopher Robin, nothing important. I suppose you haven't seen a house lying about anywhere, have you, said Eeyore? Well, what sort of house? Just a house. Who lives there? I do. At least I thought I did, but I suppose I don't. After all, we can't all have houses. Oh, but Eeyore, I didn't know. I, I always thought. Yeah, the light is cosy, isn't it? I don't know how it is, Christopher Robin, but with all this snow and one thing and another, not to mention icicles and such like, it isn't so hot in my field, and about three o'clock in the morning, I get a bit cold. Um. Oh, Eeyore... And I said to myself, the others will be sorry if I'm getting myself all cold. They haven't got brains of any of them, only grey fluff that's blown into their heads by mistake. And they don't think. But if it goes on snowing for another six weeks or so, one of them will begin to say to himself, you all can't be very so much too hot about three o'clock in the morning. And then it will get about and I'll be sorry. Oh, E, or said Christopher Robin, feeling all sorry already. I didn't mean you, Christopher Robin, you're different. So what it all comes to is that I built myself a house down by my little wood. Did you really, said Christopher Robin? How exciting. The really exciting part, said Eeyore, in his most melancholy voice, is that when I left this morning it was there, and when I came back it wasn't. Not at all very natural, and it was only Eeyore's house, but I still just wondered. Christopher Robin didn't stop to wonder. He was already back in his house, putting on his waterproof hat and his waterproof boots and his waterproof Macintosh as fast as he could. Well, go and look for your house at once. 
Sometimes, said Eeyore, when people have quite finished taking a person's house, there are one or two bits which they don't want and are rather glad of for the person to take back, if you know what I mean. So I thought if we just went. Come on, said Christopher Robin, and off they hurried. In a very little time, they got to the corner of the field by the side of the pine wood where Eeyore's house wasn't any longer. There, said Eeyore, not a stick left. Of course, I've still got all the snow to do with what I like. One mustn't complain. But Christopher Robin wasn't listening to Eeyore. He was listening to something else. Can you hear that, he said. Listen. They both listened, and they heard a deep, gruff voice saying in a singing voice that the more it snowed, the more it went on snowing, and a small, high voice was tiddly pomming in between. It's poo, said Christopher Robin excitedly. Possibly, said Eeyore. And Piglet, said Christopher Robin excitedly. Probably, said Eeyore. What we want is a trained bloodhound. <laughs> the words of the song changed suddenly. We've finished our house, sang the gruff voice. Tiddly pom, sang the squeaky one. It's a beautiful house. Tiddly pom, I wish it were mine. Tiddly pom, poo, shouted Christopher Robin. The singers on the gate stopped suddenly. It's Christopher Robin, said Pooh eagerly. He's round by the place where we got all those sticks, said Piglet. Can you guess what's happened? Come on, said Pooh. They climbed down their gate and hurried around the corner of the wood, Pooh making welcoming noises all the way. Why, here is Eeyore, said Pooh, when he'd finished hugging Christopher Robin. And he nudged Piglet, and Piglet nudged him, and then they thought to themselves what a lovely surprise they had got ready. Hello, Eeyore. Same to you, Pooh Bear, and twice on Thursdays, said Eeyore gloomily. Before Pooh could say, why Thursdays? Christopher Robin began to explain the sad story of Eeyore's lost house. And Pooh and Piglet listened, and their eyes seemed to get bigger and bigger. Where did you say the house was? asked Pooh. It was just over here. M made of sticks? Yes. Oh, said Piglet. What? said Eeyore. I, I just said, oh, said Piglet nervously. And so, as to seem quite at ease, he hummed the tiddly pom song once or twice. Y you're sure it was a house, said Pooh. I mean, you're sure the house was just here? Well, of course I'm sure, said Eeyore, and he murmured to himself. No brain at all, some of them. Why, what's the matter, Pooh? asked Christopher Robin. Well, said Pooh, the fact is, said Pooh, well, the fact is, said Pooh, you see, it's like this. <laughs> and something seemed to tell him that he wasn't explaining very well, and so he nudged Piglet. It, it, it's like this, said Piglet quickly. Ah, uh, only warmer, he added after a deep thought. What's warmer? Uh, the other side of the wood where Eeyore's house is. My house, said Eeyore. My house is here. No, said Piglet, the other side of the wood is where your house is, because of it being warmer. But I ought to know. Come and look now, said Piglet simply, and he led the way. There wouldn't be two houses, said Pooh, not so close together. They came round the corner, and there was Eeyore's house, looking as comfy as anything. There you are, said Piglet. Inside as well as outside, said Pooh proudly. Eeyore went inside and came out again. It's a remarkable thing, he said. It is my house, and I built it where I said I did, so the wind must have blown it here. And the wind blew it right over the wood and blew it down here, and here it is as good as ever. In fact, it's in a better place. Much better, said Pooh and Piglet together. It shows what can be done by taking a little trouble, said Eeyore. Do you see, Pooh? Do you see, Piglet? Brains first, and then hard work. Look at it. That's the way to build a, build a house, said Eeyore proudly. Oops. And there is Eeyore's house that Pooh and Piglet stole and rebuilt because <laughs> they didn't realise that, that the sticks they were using was from the original house. So they left Eeyore in the house, and Christopher Robin went back to lunch with his friends Pooh and Piglet. And on the way, they told him of the awful mistake they had made. 
and when he had finished laughing, they all sang the outdoor song for snowy weather for the rest of the way home. Piglet, who was quite not sure of his voice, putting in only the tiddly palms. And I know it seems easily, said Piglet to himself, but it isn't everybody who could do it. And that's the end of the chapter. <laughs> I, need, I bought a whole bunch of um, of picture books to do after we finish Winnie the Pooh um, that are like little shorter like children's stories so I can just show the pictures because it is so lovely. And I lo love the, the end paper in this book of the 100 acre wood. Can you see? These Christopher Robin. See, there's Winnie the Pooh, there's, there's Rabbit, and Kanga and Roo in the sandy pit. Oh, and there's Winnie the Pooh there. Winnie the Pooh. And there's Piglet, tiny little Piglet. So that's our story time for tonight, everybody. Sorry that it got a little bit disrupted. in the first live stream before I marked it up thank you <laughs> for all the screen taps that we did to get to 100k and thank you for the screen taps now we're at 5k almost thank you um, so that's my live stream for tonight I'll be back tomorrow night at 8pm Melbourne Australia time and we will do some more ASMR and do some more story times and hopefully 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 Yuki will not scream so much. <laughs>